we made it down here to Lafayette. We're at the Acadian Village, a collection of 20 or so authentic homes that have been relocated here and businesses and schools. Uh, it costs about less than $10 to get in. Uh, and then it's self-guided. You just walk yourself around and if it starts to rain, you walk out and get your raincoat and come back in. They give you a uh, nice brochure with a phone number on it that actually you, you can link it to your cell phone and get a self-guided tour. But Carver Cash likes wandering around lost, going to the wrong places seven or eight times. So, well, this certainly is pretty. So let's go take a look. I think uh, I think she said all of the buildings were open except for two, uh, which were private. So. La Maison Bernard, 1840, is the oldest building uh, in the park. Let's go take a look at it. Pie safe. With the screen on the side to keep flies and bugs out of it. Probably a dry cupboard. Well, this is kind of nice. It's like a living museum. Treadle sewing machine, which I've actually owned one of those and restored it. Now I can say in all honesty I did attend one year in a one-room schoolhouse in the country I'm not going to say where it was but it was a one-room schoolhouse now lest you think boy how old is he I'm not that old uh, we were bust out there while they were remodeling the main elementary school but I never forgot it. I never forgot that one room schoolhouse with everybody in there and trying to teach multiple classes at the same time. Now, as a comment on the uh, Louisiana educational system, between Edith May and I, we have three children, a daughter who graduated from LSU in Baton Rouge, and a son and a daughter that graduated from University of New Orleans, or UNO, in New Orleans. And not to brag, but every single one of them can write their name. And I'm proud of that. When you get a college education like that for $40,000, and you come out and you can write your name, that's something to be proud of.
iron back chairs, a lot of cane bottom chairs. In my life, I've actually owned both of those at one time or another. Prayer chair for Roman Catholic households where you can kneel and pray. Big wardrobe, I actually have one of those at the house. You know, one of the things that I learned early on when I messed around with refinishing uh, antiques was beds were really reasonable and they're, I mean, this is a beautiful one, uh, that dark varnish, if it hadn't been painted, it's very easy to refinish. Where you run into the problem was there was no standard size for uh, mattresses. I don't know when that occurred, but each one was basically custom made. So you get yourself a nice bed and get it all set up and then try to find a mattress that's going to fit in it and you go, oh, crap. Dry sink. Little baby tub. That almost looks like an old refrigerator where you put a block of ice in there to keep things cool. Baby bed. I don't know if the chapel's open or not. We'll try the door, and if it is, we'll assume it's okay to go in. If not, we'll see. Ooh. Yes, it is open. Well, I'll tell you what. That is one heavy door. Morgan, this would have been a fairly well-to-do congregation. It's like oak, oak pews. And if you can't afford stained glass, the next thing you do is find yourself a wood carver and having carved your scenes for you. you. Put the money in the stained glass behind the altars. This has been real enjoyable. So if you want to get a taste of what it was like back in the early to mid 1800s, then by all means, come on down here. Stroll around can read off the cheat sheet or you can be like me just walk around and say whatever comes to your mind and then decide later if it's wrong you'll just do a voiceover oh. so I guess we'll go back and look at the uh, general store okay we're gonna take a little look around the general store here I will undoubtedly find something to buy because I buy something every place I film. 